It's time for the listeners episode. <laughs> Your face looked like you hated yourself halfway through that. Like you knew it was not good. I couldn't stop. <laughs> it was too late. The train had taken off. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're here for listener number six. 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 Yeah, because it's a it's this is our half anniversary. Oh my fucking god. Happy six months. Happy half a year. Wow. Like, if we were dating, we'd be, like, serious by now. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We would be having a steak dinner tonight. Why aren't we doing that? Because we had wine and milkshakes instead. Well, that's a fair point, and I'm just going to have to accept it. So Also because you're a vegetarian, apparently, so you say. I mean, I don't eat pork or beef, so I'm not a vegetarian, but I but I don't eat pork or we beef. We have a nice chicken steak. A, mm, mm. Chicken steak. Chicken fried steak. Okay. That's not bad. Except it's steak that's chicken fried chicken nuggets okay i'll take that okay um anyway we're here to tell your stories lucky you yeah lucky you this is must be nice about you wish someone would talk about my stories god i wish someone would like let me talk maybe for a we minute. should have we should start something like that where we just have microphones in our face and we just talk about stories you think i don't know if anyone would listen no probably not also yeah. like ugh, people wouldn't get us you know i feel like <laughs> We're at a level where we're not really, like, accessible to the modern right. person. I mean, people want, they want to be us. Sometimes they want us. Sure. It's a, it's a, it's a fine line. Totally. Mm-hmm. It's, like, a difficult thing for people. We're just not relatable. We're too, we're too good. We're, like, up at a level that people don't understand. Or Nor can achieve. Sure. Through sheer effort. Right. Mm-hmm. It must be really hard, honestly. I feel bad for them. I do, too. And that's why we do listener episodes. <laughs> I'm ready to read some uh, some names. Thank you. Some several, several names because we have so many people willing to help us out with this podcast and it's blowing our minds. We are so grateful. There's so many of you. Like, my heart just gets so excited and happy whenever I look at the list. So thank you, guys. It's a, a whopping group, I'd say. A whopping, a whopping group. A whopping group. Whopping. How are we reading this All right. Group? So I decided to create a new organization. Good for me. Um, good for you, Christine. Really. So no one else is here to bullshit you. Yeah, full of good decisions I am. Um, <laughs> so I made this little Excel sheet, and I did not color code them this time. So oh, let's celebrate that. Let's celebrate it. Um Actually, first, I feel like we should mention this person who I think we just didn't mention in the last. I don't know how this happened, but Tamsin H. I realized you weren't in the list before, and I don't know if we forgot to mention you, but but thank you, Tamsin. She's in the ten dollars rewards, and somehow we oh, missed well, her. I know. I suck. I know. Super. Thank you. Listen, ten times in a row. Ten times. Um, all right. So, do you want to get started here? Are we just like? Are we doing this in chunks? Or are we doing this like the the turkey song? Just boom, boom, boom. We boom, can't boom, like boom. sing it if that's what you're suggesting. Not with that attitude. Well, let's. <laughs> <laughs> we could hardly sing the Thanksgiving right, song. Right, right, right. That's, that's a good point. Okay. okay. Emily with an IE. Classic Kevin. Andrew P. Sam K. Baron and his wife, Kirsten. 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 Sorry, I forgot God to put, damn it. I forgot to put the pronunciation. Katie W. Jessica V. J. Erica H. Sierra M. Maddie T, Rachel V, Lindsay S, Darth Jen, Sue S, Mary S. <laughs> I like to tell myself everyone with the name S, it means Schultz. Schaefer. Oh, oh, okay. Awkward. Uh, Caroline H, Christy, Brittany P, Caleb T, Andrea H, uh, Aaron F, uh, Michelle B, Jordan B, Amber C, Ashley H, and her boyfriend Hunter C, who are, uh, she's on Team Milkshake and he's on Team Wine. Uh, I'm going to say Danny B. Hillary H, Elena C, Hunter L, Molly, Casey S, my girl Tamsin, Tamsin, <laughs> uh, Erica H, Christine B, uh, Karen K, Jessica and her sister Adrian, 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 Julia W, Lee- <laughs> that's not a person. <laughs> we also have an alien fan base. <laughs> In case you didn't know, that was spelled with a silent J. If you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's <was> good. <laughs> uh, Lara V. Dobby. Jeffrey S. Kia. My girl, Hori. 
Don't call her that. Joy. <laughs> Grace V. D. Sarah C. Katie B. Aaron M. Tiana. Ashton S. Blaze, <laughs> Mrs. Schieffer. <laughs> you mean Mr. Schieffer? Eh. Renee, my BFF. Is that my mom? That's your mom. Linda, uh, Elise, aka Flighted Chemist. Melissa M. Marisol. Rachel. That's your sister. I oh, think. my sister. My mom and my sister. Uh, Cece, your friend. My buddy. Miss Johnny, be good. Our pal. Amber, you. Oh, my homegirl, Renata. Renata. Lisa G in Norway. Not the Netherlands like I uh, like you. aggressively said last time. <laughs> okay, now we're on $5. Oh, P.S. Those were $10. <laughs> Just a, another another example of the fine organizational skills over here in the administration department of, and that's why we joined. If anyone's looking for an unpaid internship in which you will receive no money nor college credit. But several thanks. Several thanks. And also you get to pet my dog. <laughs> You just stop on by. I'm not actually joking if anyone really needs an internship in L.A. and... Shameless plug. I'm desperate. Please help, <laughs> help me. Help my Excel sheet. Help okay. she'll buy you wine. I, well, I can't promise that, but... Oh, she'll drink wine in front of you. That's it. Okay. okay. Uh, Jody. So this is a $5. Yeah. Okay, Jody. Sydney K. Alexandra S. Morgan M. Crime Girls Podcast. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, Abigail H. Jackie G. Oh, that's a cool one. That is a cool one. Um, Allie B. Allie R. Oh, Emma W. W. I don't know why I said it like that. <laughs> George W. Oh, Lord. Emma W. Uh, Justin H. Camille V. Vanessa C. Sarah L. Mariah M. Stephanie M. Kim S. Danny M. Brittany M. <laughs> Danielle. Uh, Rebecca M. Hillbilly Horror Stories. Eric S. Dana. Molly T. Louise. Chelsea A. Coral, Wynema, Rebecca H, Jennifer M, uh, Alexander, my brother. Oh, finally you got a family member in there. Finally. I was collecting I them. I had Mrs. Blaze in there. Yeah. <laughs> okay, uh, $2 reward. So this is Team Wine. So I guess I'll read Team Wine real quick. Okay, cool. We got Brooke P, Amanda B, Katie O, Jessica C, Emily R, whose Instagram is book.happy, uh, Jess, uh, whose pod Kiwi Crimes comes out in July, which is this month, so it's probably out there now. Uh, Nikki Shelby, uh, Off the Cuffs, a uh, kink and BDSM podcast. Hey, girl. Hey, hey. Deviant Women podcast. Adrienne R. Lexus's dog's Instagram, Wilson Wants Belly Rubs. Love it. Sassy Chick, Heather, Sarah B., Allison G., a.k.a. your girlfriend, a.k.a. Al Pal, a.k.a. my roommate, a.k.a. she's on Team Wine, so it sucks for you. <laughs> Uh, Zoe, Crystal, Nicole, and that's it. It's your turn. Guess who's first in line on Team Milkshake? Bernhard. My fucking father. Thank you again. I'll take your girlfriend. You take my dad. Gladly. Good. Oh, that's my stepmom. Oh my God. So my dad and your stepmom are both on your team. They're the first ones on there. Aw. Okay. So, uh, her name is Elizabeth Schizzle. What? Elizabeth Schultz. Elizabeth Schizzle. Well, when, uh, she first became my stepmom, I would call her Schizzle. Oh, that's cute. Yep. So a little shizzle. Mm-hmm. Uh, Allison B, Alexandra M, Molly B, Andy G, Work Kirk. Oh, Kirky's <laughs> Kirky's donates now. Dude, he's donated for a while. We've already said his name on here. Uh, thanks, Kirky. I just named him Work Kirk on here. Cool. Patricia F, Crazy. Nope. You know, every, every, time, time, every, every time. Every time. Every time. Crime Crazy Podcast. There we go. Emily M, Jerry K, Derek N, Zach E, Jessica E, and the True Crime Fan Club. High five. We did it. We did it. Uh, I just want to say thanks, guys. We uh, like truly a thousand percent mean it that we couldn't do this without your guys' support. So it we absolutely could not. Not even a little bit. So every dollar is is making it's this helping happen. so much. Mm-hmm. It's the reason we're able to do everything that we have done and everything we're gonna do. Which y'all are your brains are gonna explode when you find out all Ugh. the cool stuff we've got planned. So much crazy shit is going on. So your 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 donations are being put to very good use so and thank you so yes. much and you're getting more out of it don't worry like don't feel like this is going nowhere you're getting more out of it and it's coming it is okay so we are ready to share yes stories mm-hmm. at least four of them at least i'm gonna start with one okay so this story is from maddie t maddie t maddie t she sent it on um email via email she the subject is ouija board shenanigans oh my god 
Hey ladies, first off, I literally just binged the entire podcast this week and love you guys. Also pretty sure my Korgs need to meet Geo and be BFFs, which BT dubs I drew, grew up with Corgis, so Aww. my heart was warmed by that statement. Um, anyway, I've always been interested in the paranormal. When I was three, my dad started me off with watching Halloween. <laughs> Fair. And it's definitely to thank for my weird obsession with the macabre. I have two Ouija board stories for you, since M won't let Christine live her life. That's true. That is amazing. I will not. That's where I become controlling in the relationship. That is real. When I was 11, I babysat my dad's co-worker's kids during one summer. I grew up on an Air Force base, so everyone in the neighborhood was fairly close. The kids were 7 and 9, which I don't know why their parents thought they'd listen to me when I was only a few years older than them, but whatever. My sister happened to be there as well that day. She was six at the time, and I really have no idea why anyone put me in charge of all these kids. And the nine-year-old wanted to play a new game her mother had bought her. <laughs> Kid goes into the bedroom and whips out a Ouija board. Ugh. My sister and I knew what it was right away. Parentheses. Thanks, Dad. Yeah. And I was a little iffy about playing it, but we did it anyway. I figured if you could buy it at the toy store, it was probably fine. That's everyone's reasoning, right? We closed all the curtains, but left the light we had on in the kitchen on because that because we weren't that crazy. Oh, right, yeah. And put our hands on the planchette. I began asking if anyone was there and it moved to and if anyone wanted to talk to us. The planchette moved to yes. I asked what the spirit's name was and the planchette moved to no. As soon as that happened, the light in the kitchen went out. No. Nope. We, we all screamed and hit the Ouija board under one of the kids' beds. From that day on, any time I babysat there, the kitchen light would turn on and off by itself. I told my dad I did not want to babysit them after that. My second Ouija board story happened a year later when one of my best friends got one for her birthday. No. I hope you're not friends with her anymore. We had heard rumors about an airman committing suicide in our neighborhood, and she wanted to use the board to see if it was true. Given my last experience, I was super hesitant to take part, but she convinced me anyway. Mm. We had a sleepover at her house. We'll call her Jen. So me, her, and three of our other friends snuck out of the house at midnight and hung out in one of the ditches near the base's gate. Okay, that sounds like something I would do. <sighs> For the record, it was super easy to sneak out of base housing back in the day, and we were hooligans. Dark times, those late 90s, early 2000s. So Jen asked the board if anyone was there and wanted to talk to us. Nothing happened. She asked again, and the planchette moved to yes. We all thought she was moving it. She asked if the spirit was a soldier. We got another yes. Then she asked if he killed himself. The planchette moved to no. Before Jen asked another question, the planchette spelled out murder. Oh, no. Our other friend, we'll call her April, freaked out and stood up. She started crying uncontrollably, and we saw a man running toward us. No. Nope. We all booked it back to Jen's house, leaving the Ouija board in the ditch. I don't know if we saw a spirit or a real person, but it turned me off of the paranormal for a few years. Good girl. What's weird is that since these experiences, I've been a bit more sensitive to the paranormal. I'll see shadows where there shouldn't be, and if my husband and I are out hiking or exploring, as soon as I have butterflies in my stomach, we turn around. I've heard footsteps at friends' houses when there was no one else there, and this is why I drink. Hashtag team wine. You guys are awesome, and keep up the... And then she sent another email. Whoops. Realized how messed up the last part was. Literally, the paranormal is why I drink, and you guys are awesome. So meow, smiley face. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so what if we played Ouija and a man just started sprinting at us? Then I could be like, wow, I saw something real. No, Christine. I mean, she seems fine. But then I asked her, like, to clarify, like, you saw the guy running towards you. She goes, oh, yeah, there was a man running towards us as a group, like, while we were sitting there. Oh, no. Because I wanted to clarify. Oh, no. So that's fucked up. Well, good. Glad that didn't happen to me. Anyway, thanks, Maddie. Thanks for living that for us. I'm going to turn, turn pass the story over to me. Pass the uh, baton. So this is from Scott. Hey, Scott. Scott has a story that I honestly can't tell you what it's about because I'm, I'm just picking it. Dun, dun, dun. Okay. And by that, she means I picked it. Christine picked it. But I, so I know it's good. She knows it's good, but she also picked it so long ago she doesn't remember it. So we're both about to have a live reaction. Yeah, I just start it and send it to you. Yep. Okay, so Scott says, so this happened in 1995 in Bosnia. Oh, well, that's we a good were all start. There. Sure. Uh, we can all relate to that. Yeah, yeah. I was part of a task force hunting for war criminals. We picked some. Oh, my. Okay, that's a badass job. Wow. The hope was to capture, but if necessary, well, you get to the point. Oh. 
Oh, okay. I can no longer relate to any of this. (laughs) Um, Our small covert team was in an area called... I'm going to fuck it up. Donja. Donya. Donna. Spell it. Don J A. Donja? Donya? I don't know. Transmonica. The nearest larger community to this would be Gratikak. Okay. I'm not sure what... I'm going to say Don... Donya? Donya. Okay. Sure. I'll accept it. I'm not sure what Donya Transmonica is like now, but at the time it was a virtual ghost town. Se- um, severely damaged buildings, abandoned streets, stray dogs wandering aimlessly, etc. That's scary. We had set up an observation point in a small abandoned two-story farmhouse on a hill overlooking the small valley in which Donya Transmonica is located. It was early morning, maybe 2 to 3 a.m., and it was a bright moonlit night, and I was on watch looking out over the landscape. I observed something maybe the size of a Labrador dog moving near an outbuilding that was approximately 50 meters from the <laughs> home we were in. Ugh. I noticed that the movement of this creature, however, was abnormal, so I took a closer look. As crazy as it sounds, it appeared to be a really big spider. What? Both in the way it moved as well as it's built. It slowly moved toward the house we were in. I was in a bit of a quandary. Did I wake my buddies? And if it turned out to be nothing, risk looking like an idiot? And he said he was the youngest member of the team. So he'd like... Right, you know. right, right. Um, and he said, but on the other hand, what if it was a risk? Oh, my God. I considered my situation. I was heavily armed. Um... So I decided to deal with this encounter on my own. The creature, just like a spider, uh, would move up the wall, and it was clear it was heading right toward me. Oh, God. <laughs> I don't even know what to think about that. When the creature got about 20 feet away from me, uh-uh, uh-uh. I leaned out the window, aimed my we- weapon, and said, I don't know who you are, and I'm not afraid of you. <laughs> and then in parentheses, he said, I was actually scared to death. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, but if you don't leave now, I swear to God, I'll kill you. Being closer now, I could see the creature clearly, and it was about the size of the aforementioned dog, so a Labrador retriever. It looked like a spider, but the head was overly large and vaguely human, Uh -uh. and the body seemed to be scaly. It tilted its head like dogs do when you talk to them, paused for a moment with me aiming my weapon the entire time. Then it seemed to grin at me, turned and retraced its steps until it got behind a little outbuilding, and I lost sight of it. When I was relieved of watch and under the pre- the pretense of answering the call of nature, I went out toward the outbuilding looking for a burrow or nest, but found nothing. Not sure what to make of this, but thought you might enjoy the story. Literally, what the fuck? What the fuck is that? That sounds like a Tumblr post. That, that sounds like some Slender Man shit. It sounds like a no sleep yeah. post. Yeah. It gives me the creeps. What the hell? So he was. it was a scaly spider the size of a dog with a human head. That grinned at him. That grinned. While he and was, understood him. While he was in, like, a a ghost town war zone. Ooh, yeah. The whole at thing 3 a.m. in the, Bosnia. By himself. The whole thing of that freaks me. That makes f- my stomach churn. Yeah. That's, if I saw that, I would truly just think, oh, oh, I die. Oh, this is where I die. I would. There's no saving myself. There's no looking for help. There's no kicking ass and making a cool story out of it absolutely i'd be like this is this is it this is how i go the fact that when he was like oh i don't know whether to wake people i'd be like i would have woken i would everyone have screamed in the bloody mile murder. radius <laughs> I screamed my lungs off Ugh. anyway your turn all right next up we've got a story from jessica w hi jessica w Hey, Christine and M. I love y'all's show so much. I work third shift and it makes my night go by so much faster. By the way, I work at a bourbon distillery in Kentucky, so I'm drinking Kentucky straight bourbon. Ooh. Not at work. (laughs) We don't judge. No, I wouldn't have judged. I have a true crime story for y'all. I recently went house hunting for my very first house. Oh. Congrats. Congrats. Must be nice. Must be nice. I fell in love with one house and happened to know the seller, who was also the realtor. So he met me at the house after I looked at it. He was going to sell me this great house for really cheap. How could I pass that up? Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. I know. As we were finishing up, he said, So I didn't want to tell you this yet because I didn't want you to have any preconceived notions about the house, but someone was murdered here. I started laughing because this guy is someone that would totally joke about something like that. The house is a gorgeous house. Brand new hardwood floors, brand new windows and doors, brand new garage door, brand new roof, brand new everything pretty much. And he was selling it to me way below asking price. I asked him why everything was brand new. The house itself is only four years old, so it didn't make 
sense why everything would already need to be replaced. He said, the insurance company came in and had to fix everything after the murder. Oh, my God. That's like it's like a brutal murder. Uh, yeah. Okay, is this guy being serious? I decided to do a quick Google search. Turns out, not only was it a murder, it was a murder-suicide. Oh, no. As the story goes, the murdered woman's family hadn't heard from her for a while, was beginning to get worried, and called the police to do a welfare check. They get to the house and somehow determine the woman to be murdered and her husband inside the house. SWAT team was called, and I guess there was some kind of standoff between the police and the suspect. The police entered the house through the garage, and they, as they entered, the man shot himself. So maybe I'm crazy, but I went ahead and decided to buy the house. <laughs> what? I was, it was such a good deal, and it was basically a brand new house! Exclamation point. I also took my dog there, and she didn't go crazy, so I don't think there was any bad mojo. I guess that's a good test. I think so. I think that was uh, was a smart call to at least bring the animal and have the dog kind of sense it I around. think so. On moving day, we were talking about how bad my new front yard looked. It's got big ruts at the bottom of the yard that make it look pretty bad. Someone kind of jokingly said it looks like a big truck drove through it. Another Google search later, and we find a picture of my new house with police cars in front of it and a huge <gasps> armored SWAT Ugh. truck sitting in the front yard right where my yard is fucked up with the ruts. Oh, no. It's crazy being that girl who lives in the murder house. It's a great story to tell when friends come over. I've lived in the house for a couple of months now and love it. Sorry, Em, but no paranormal stories yet. But if something happens, I'll be sure to write back. Love you guys. Keep drinking. I don't... I mean, good for her, and sounds like she made a great deal, but I don't think I could move somewhere that I knew a murder was i don't think i could do it i feel like people like die though more often and more in more places than we realize though yeah but if they like were aggressively violently sure sure i don't know i just i don't know if i could i would have a really hard time if it were like on your brain yeah yeah that's fair i would probably do it and sage it or some shit oh yeah oh i could i would do it if i thought about it long enough and then saged it 20 times and had every breed of dog in there all at one time and separately every breed every single and babies sure bring in a dachshund bring in a baby yeah bring in a lab bring in a baby yeah Mm -hmm. a baby per animal the dalmatian comes next yeah yeah all right that seems like a really like um feasible plan i mean no but that's how i would have to be able to i wouldn't be able to wrap my head around it any other way i mean I wrote, I sent her an email back and said, if I were you, I'd probably have moved in too. It's hard to pass up a deal, especially in a house these days. (laughs) So, and then I said, but I'm definitely waiting for the inevitable ghost stories that come out of this place. Oh yeah. Yeah. So if we could get a true crime and a ghost story out of the same story, that'd be pretty nice. If we could do a follow up ghost story. Mm Mm-hmm. This is from Devin. Hey, Devin. Devin says, hello, friends, because you're obviously my best podcast buddies, (laughs) especially Geo, handsome boy. Oh, well, yeah. He's a handsome boy. Baby boy. Little baby stinky, stinky boy. Um, She says, first off, just know I love the podcast. And if I wasn't unemployed because I decided to get my master's in creative writing, aka why I drink, uh, you'd be getting all my money. Well, we get it. I have no money either. We studied television. We get we we, we studied basically creative writing. Sure, we study. We get the struggle. Uh, you guys are amazing, and I'm sorry I'm a creep who's also followed you on your personal Instagram accounts. <gasps> Whoops. Aww. Uh, I don't judge that at all. I'm gonna be honest. We love that. Yeah, I'm not against it. We're not against it at all. Uh, following our three stories, my mother's told me about our family. I love paranormal and true crime, and I'm in the camp of I want to believe more than I believe. But my mother doesn't bullshit, so it's hard not to feel like something's in our genes. Oh, boy. My grandmother was a badass woman who lived to almost 90 and lived alone for a long time in an apartment in Massachusetts. What? Uh, Several miles away was the soldier's home where my grandfather was slowly dying of a number of ailments, but (sighs) mostly old age. My mom and her brothers and sisters were getting... Uh, really worried about him because the nurses reported that in the middle of the night he was sitting on the edge of his bed and having long conversations with no one (sighs) they all assumed it was the beginning of the end but didn't want to tell my grandmother because of the catholic tendency to repress everything until it explodes (laughs) which i get Uh, i am half my family's catholic so to my entire family (laughs) my mother went over to see her determined to break the news to my grandmother who was extremely close with her 
Before she could tell her, my grandmother came out with something else. She told my mom she thought she was going insane because every night in the middle of the night, she saw my grandfather sitting on the edge of the bed and they would have long conversations. <gasps> she said she knew they weren't dreams, but she was too scared to tell anyone about them because she didn't want them to put her in the hospital too. <gasps> After my mother told my grandmother about what the nurses had said, they never spoke of it again. <gasps> what the fuck? So they'd been talking to each other. That's oh love. Oh my god, that's so heartwarming. How are... And I don't even know how that would work, but they were still finding ways to talk to each other. They were probably soulmates. That's some X-Men shit. My heart. That's awesome. That's really sweet. That's love. That's love. If you can't communicate face-to-face without the face... While you're in a home. When they're somewhere else, then that's not love. Apparently. Then- Fuck you. Apparently. (laughs) We have a lot to live up to. (laughs) (laughs) But wait, there's more. Oh, good. She says, then my mother. She only told me about two instances of something happening. But the way she said it, I have a feeling there's a few more times she didn't want to talk about. I'll have to pry her with wine. She's team wine all the way. Oh, we get that with our mothers. (laughs) The first time she had a flash, as she called it, she was in the shower at my grandmother's apartment. She saw me, maybe two at the time dressed in entirely different clothes and falling off a 14th floor balcony <gasps> while trying to assure herself that she was just being crazy and paranoid about her first kid. She rushed out of the shower and into the living room to find me and clothes. She had seen in her flash opening the door to the balcony, which no. was usually locked. No, my grandmother had changed me after I had gotten food on myself and then fallen asleep. So that's how she had the different clothes on that her mom saw. Oh my God. The second flash. Oh Yeah. So she had a premonition of her falling from the balcony before yeah, the, she... <gasps> literally minutes before she did. Oh, my God. The second flash was maybe a year later. My mother had dropped me off at preschool, and as she was a stay-at-home mom when I was little, had planned to go to a local beach to read. <laughs> nice. It's a good job. I'll do it. Uh, but on her way there, she had a flash where she saw herself getting attacked and thrown into a <gasps> trunk by a masked man. She tried to tell herself she was being crazy, but she still turned the car around and went home. On the Smart. Oh, yeah, good girl. On the news that night, she saw a woman had been attacked at the same <gasps> beach she was heading towards. She's never given me the details about what happened to that poor woman. Oh, God. my fucking... Can you imagine a flash? I'm like, what does that even mean? Like, you have a vision? A vision, yeah, I while guess. While you're driving? Wow. Wow. Jesus. This is the shit... This is how I believe. Yes, exactly. Like, how do you not... That's too coincidental. Like, you think people just make that up? No. But wait, there's more. Oh, good. Lastly, my mother told me a story about me. Ooh, so three whole generations. I'm so pumped for this. My grandfather died when I was four or five, and by that time we had moved to California. After my mom got the call, she decided to tell me about my grandfather's death. She decided to not tell me about my grandfather's death until we flew back to Massachusetts, so I wasn't upset on the plane. Good old Catholic repression at it again. Uh, amen. She said, after she hung up the phone, she watched me play in the backyard, and it looked like I was having an animated conversation with no one. Uh -uh. Uh-uh. She also saw me hugging the invisible person and seemingly listening intently when they talked. I was kind of a weird kid who loved to read and play pretend, so this wasn't entirely abnormal. I came in a few minutes later and asked for a snack. When my mom handed me my crackers, I'm assuming it was goldfish crackers because I want some right now, uh, I told her- Me too, by the way. She wrote that. (laughs) <laughs> so good girl me too i want that also uh i told her she didn't need to be sad anymore at first she assumed i was just being creepily perceptive <laughs> because she wasn't crying or anything but when pressed i assured her that she didn't need to be sad because grandpa was happier where he was since he could play baseball again <gasps> like i said i was a weird kid so my mom just tried to brush it off but then my mother called my grandmother to make sure she was all right and on a whim told her about what I had said even though she knew my grandfather had never played or even seemed interested in baseball. My grandmother was quiet for a long moment before she told my mother something my mother had never heard before, that around World War II my grandfather had been on an army baseball team. I have no recollection of any of this even though I was old enough to remember. What's weirdest to me is no one else in the family has had any experiences like this, and out of the five siblings, only my mother looks like my grandmother, and out of dozens of cousins and second cousins, only I strongly resemble either of them. Something in the gene pool, I swear. There's a few more stories, but I'll save them for another email. This is way too long already. Super, super sorry, but also I hope you liked it, even if you don't read it. 
<laughs> XO, 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 not Gossip Girl. Sorry, Devin. <laughs> and then she said, P.S. mostly to Christine. Hey, I hey. mean, I am team wine, but don't worry, Em. I love you too. And then she said, weird connection. When you mentioned uh, Lisa Lamp and Nellie was Blaze's aunt, it jogged something in my memory. I don't know a ton about Lisa, but I could remember my godparents um, mentioning her. I asked, and they said they've gone to a couple of dinners with Lisa Lampanelli's sister and are casual friends with her and her husband. Ah! So my quasi-adoptive parents might be friends with your fiancé's parents. Congratulations, by the way. Obviously, the podcast friendship is meant to be, and that's why we drink. I love that. I wrote her back, and I was like, you know Nancy and Brian. (laughs) (laughs) That's awesome. That's Blaze's aunt and uncle. That's so sweet. Also, what the fuck with those stories? That's wild. Especially, it it does add a little something that, out of all of the giant family, the only ones with experiences like this all happen to look alike. Have the same, yeah, exactly. Anyway. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Your stories were on point today. Our next listener's episode will be in a whole month in September. God. Which is wild. Crazy. Thanks for taking us on this six-month journey. Thank you. It's been a rocking time. You can send your stories at and that's why we drink at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. You can also submit them at our website, and that's why we drink.com. Mm-hmm. You can also just become friends with us on social media of ATWWD Podcast. Um, so thanks guys for your story. Send in more. We're saving them all and hoping to use as many as we can on future episodes. And um, check out our merch at and that's we can go to our website or you can go to and that's where we drink dot big and um that's all i have to say so and, and that's, that's why, why we drink, drink. bye y'all